If you've spent any time in the health or longevity space online, you've probably heard this claim. Grip strength is one of the best predictors of how long you will live. Right up there with VO2 max. This has led to a whole wave of people sharing their grip strength routines, trying to boost their numbers, and treating grip training like some sort of life extension hack. But if you take a step back for a moment, you will realize that this is actually a textbook case of Goodhart's Law. So in this video, I want to explain why training your grip strength won't make you live longer and why it's really not even a good predictor of longevity in the first place. Okay, let's start with the basic claim. Higher grip strength is linked to lower mortality risk. That is definitely true in a statistical sense. When researchers look at big population data sets, they often find that people with stronger grips tend to live longer than people with weak grips. It's easy to measure, quick to perform, and doesn't require a lab or a treadmill. So naturally, it will show up in a lot of studies. Some have even called it one of the strongest physical predictors of longevity that we have available. But here's the key thing. Correlation isn't causation. I know it's a cliche, but this is really the heart of the entire conversation. Grip strength correlates with longevity not because your hands have some sort of magical power to keep you alive, but because it serves as a proxy for other systems in your body. In this case, your neuromuscular system. In older adults, where grip strength is most predictive, it essentially tells us something about the health of their nervous system and their ability to recruit muscle. That's really what we're measuring here. Not just how strong your hands are, but how well your brain and nerves can activate muscles. Now, why does that matter? Because as people age, especially if they develop neurodegenerative diseases like dementia or Alzheimer's, their neuromuscular control gets a lot worse. They lose coordination, muscle strength, and reflexes. And one of the first signs of that decline is reduced grip strength. So it's not the grip that causes you to live longer. It's that if your nervous system is still working well in your 70s or 80s, chances are your grip strength is okay and that your overall health is also relatively good. This then brings us to Goodhart's Law. It states that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. In other words, once people start gaming the system to improve the metric itself instead of the thing that the metric represents, the metric loses its value. And that's exactly what's happening here. Grip strength used to be a helpful health signal because no one was trying to improve it. It just naturally reflected people's baseline neuromuscular function. But now that it's being optimized for with special routines and grip tools, it no longer reflects that natural baseline. It reflects who is trained for it. So if everyone starts trying to boost grip strength, it stops being a reliable predictor. It becomes just another number that people chase without actually addressing the underlying system that it was meant to represent. This also brings up a bigger issue. Longevity science itself is still very weak. We love to act like we figured it out with magic biomarkers and lifespan predictors, but the truth is we're still guessing on a lot of it. Take something as basic as age. You would think that age would be the strongest possible predictor of mortality, right? And it is, but even age, which we know is tightly tied to death risk, only explains about 30 to 40% of the variance in mortality, at least in studies that use it without other health metrics like frailty, biomarkers, or disease status. In statistical terms, that's an R squared of 0.3 to 0.4. That's not terrible, but it's not great either. It means that in these longevity studies, age alone was only able to explain 30 to 40% of the differences in when people die. The other 60% depend on things like overall health, genetics, lifestyle, diseases, and just plain luck. Now compare that to grip strength, which obviously has to be a much worse predictor than age. Depending on the study, Grip strength explains maybe 15 to 25% of the variation in mortality. So an R squared of around 0.15 to 0.25. That's okay by social science standards, but by any objective measure, it's not great. It's a weak to moderate correlation at best. And remember, that's before everyone started training for it. As more people game the system, that predictive power will drop even further. 
What I'm trying to say with this video is that if you've been training your grip strength because you want to be healthy, then great. There's nothing wrong with strong hands and strong forearms. And if this gets you to follow a more healthy lifestyle, even better. But if you're training it specifically because you think it will make you live longer, you're misunderstanding the studies. It's not the grip strength itself that leads to a longer life. It's the underlying thing that it represents. And once we all start trying to max out that number, it stops being meaningful. That's the danger of chasing proxies. They work well until we optimize them and then they stop working. 